Hydraulic accumulators are specifically designed to store and then discharge pressurized fluid as needed. Hydropneumatic accumulators are charged with nitrogen, which is separated from the fluid by a piston, bladder or diaphragm and they are classified as pressure vessels. There are risks involved in working with high pressure fluids and gases and on no account should any welding, soldering or any mechanical work be carried out on the accumulator shell. Work on systems utilizing hydraulic accumulators must only be carried out once the pressure in the fluid and or the gas has been released. Hydropneumatic accumulators need to be pre-charged with an inert gas in order to work. Correct gas pressure is vital as it defines the stored hydraulic fluid volume and pressure which is important for the safe and correct operation of any machine. To ensure correct gas pressure is maintained, periodic inspection is necessary. Industrial grade nitrogen is almost always used in hydropneumatic accumulators. Using any other gas in these applications is dangerous and should not be used. The nitrogen pre-charge pressure of an accumulator can only be assessed when it has been completely depressurized of hydraulic fluid. To achieve this, the accumulator must be positively isolated from the live system and released of all hydraulic energy, or the entire system must be completely shut down and fully depressurized, or the accumulator is not currently connected to a system. For example, it is on the workbench. The HADAC FPU-01 Universal Charging and Testing Unit can be fitted directly to HADAC diaphragm and piston accumulators. The A3 adapter is used to connect to a bladder type accumulator and this adapter is clearly stamped. The accumulator gas valve is open and closed by pushing down the valve plunger. This will be operated by the center screw of the A3 adapter. Due to the high pressures involved, this valve should never be opened by hand. Only use the universal charging and testing unit and use the following process. Remove the plastic protective cap. Remove the metal seal cap. Ensure the socket head cap screw of the A3 adapter has been wound back to ensure the gas valve is not open upon fitting it to the stem. Ensure the surfaces are clean and screw the adapter on hand tight. Ensure the surfaces of the universal charging and testing unit are clean and that the sealing o-ring has been fitted correctly before fitting the universal charging and testing unit to the A3 adapter. Align the spring-loaded hex drive to the screw and screw the universal charge head to the A3 adapter, hand tight. Ensure the gas release valve on the side of the charge head has been closed firmly. It closes clockwise like a tap. Before connecting a nitrogen regulator to a nitrogen bottle, ensure the regulator will be closed by backing the pressure setting down winding the adjustment counterclockwise. Ensure the threads and seats are clean and connect the nitrogen regulator to a bottle of industrial grade nitrogen. Connect the hose in between the regulator and the universal testing charge head. Open the isolation valve of the bottle. Slowly turn the main spindle of the charge head clockwise until you feel resistance to movement. At this point, back the spindle off a quarter of a turn. Begin the gas flow from the bottle to the accumulator by slowly raising the pressure at the regulator. When shipped, the majority of high-DAC bladder accumulators are charged to 2 bar. At this pressure, the bladder is inflated and is in contact with the inside of the shell, ensuring little chance of damaging the bladder. If the bladder is new or has been deflated, the initial inflation must be done as slow as possible to avoid stretching or rupturing the bladder. You can assess if the bladder has been inflated by checking the position of the fluid port poppet stem. If it has extended, the inflated bladder is pushing the poppet valve closed. The rate of nitrogen flow may only be increased once the bladder has inflated properly. Raise the gas pressure in the vessel to the desired pre-charge pressure. Stop the flow of gas by backing off the nitrogen regulator fully. Temperature changes may cause small pressure changes in the accumulator assembly to occur. 
it is best practiced to charge the vessel to a slightly higher pressure than what is needed. Allow the vessel to cool and then depressurize to the final setting slowly. Once at the desired pressure level, you can begin disconnection by winding the main spindle counterclockwise and reclose the gas valve. The spindle has been fully wound back when a faint clicking noise can be heard. Release the gas from the charge head and close by opening the gas release valve in a counterclockwise direction. You can remove the charge head from the A3 adapter once it has been depressurized. Remove the A3 adapter from the gas stem. Ensure no gas is escaping the accumulator by using a leak detection fluid. Replace the metal seal cap and tighten it to 30 newton meters. Replace the plastic protective cap. Close the main isolation valve on the nitrogen bottle. Let the rest of the remaining gas out of the regulator by adjusting the pressure regulator up. You can now remove the hose from the regulator and the regulator from the nitrogen bottle. It is recommended that the gas pre-charge pressure is checked the following week. If no gas loss is observed, check again after four months. If no losses are observed again, a six monthly inspection cycle is suggested. Whether you are looking to maintain your current solutions or update your solutions, give Hutchins Hydraulics a call on 031-301-6422 for all your hydraulic, pneumatic and automation needs.